wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, tight ends, do they matter? Yeah, they really do. And this year specifically, I think there's a clear cut strategy of what to do with tight end. We're going to discuss it on the show today. Talk about the early guys, the late guys, and the middle tight ends. There's a, a couple of those you certainly want to avoid. We also have a huge announcement if you want a chance to win an Ultimate Draft Kit for life. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, and most importantly, enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to tell you about FantasyChamps.com. FantasyChamps.com is running their biggest sale ever. This week only buy a championship ring and receive a $39 draft board for free. Simply pick out which championship ring suits your fancy and then add your draft board of choice to your cart and then enter the promo code free draft for $39 in savings. Fantasy Champs all new draft board designs are second to none and come with everything you need for your live draft whether it's the new exclusive Ooh. fantasy footballers board design I recommend that one or the sleek NLPA superstar draft board That one's good too but the other, yeah, the, the, the fantasy football one with one is us better. on it yeah. yeah Uh your draft board look it's going to it's going to make that draft party real nice. Remember, use that code free draft at fantasychamps.com for this exclusive deal. Inventory is limited. Sale valid August 17th through the 22nd while supplies last. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, August 17th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers. Another episode of the show let's right here on a fine Tuesday morning. Let's get after it. <laughs> was, that, was that your huddle speech right there? Because it was not convincing. I'm trying out some new catchphrases. <laughs> Let's get after it. Let's get after it. But do you say that one with like a little bit of insecurity in your voice? Well, yeah, because it's dumb. <laughs> Let's <laughs> try some masculine <laughs> phrases on this morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we Tomorrow is let's hit it. <laughs> okay. All right. You you do you, man. Um, happy to see you didn't shave your beard off. You might have ended up looking like Travis Kelsey. Oh, my goodness. I don't see what the problem is. What? Have you not lowered him in your rankings? He looks no. like a fool. He looks like a dad. He looks dumb. He looked great with a beard. Now he just looks like some okay. rando guy. I agree that the beard is better, but I I don't know what all the hula blue is all about. Well, he timed this up for us because we have our top 10 tight ends on today's show, which he may not make after that picture. We'll see. Uh, lots going on, including... Very special announcement. We have an exclusive live stream this week because we are giving away the ultimate draft kit for life. For life. Along with a DK Metcalf signed jersey. Uh, we did this for the first time last year. It was a lot of fun. Basically, here's how it works. If you want to be entered for a chance to win the ultimate draft kit for life. For life. Forever. <laughs> You just need to order the 2021 Ultimate Draft Kit by Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, why why that time exactly? It's because we will be live on Thursday starting at 7 p.m. We will count it down and we will give away the Ultimate Draft Kit for life. Now, life. if you're out there and you're like, oh, no, I already ordered it. Well, you're good. That's good. You're entered to win. So you just have to be... You just have to have the 2021 UDK by then to be entered. We did this last year. We'll be live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. Ballerslive.com is the – just go there, and you'll be able to catch that live stream. But we did this last year, had a very special winner. They've already redeemed their uh, their UDK for this year, but still have the rest of their life to enjoy it. Yeah. What it cost them, Andy? It was free. That's right. I mean, th this year it was free. Yeah. Uh, but that's going on. Check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com, if you want a chance to enter, like I said, before Thursday. You can follow the show 
over on Twitter, Instagram, at the FF Ballers is the Twitter. Uh, Instagram is what? Brooks. Fantasy slash footballers. Slash fantasy footballers. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to watch the show or be alerted when that live stream's going going live. What else is going on? Anything new, Brooksy? Nah. How are you doing today? <laughs> doing great. We've got doing some great. big, big shows this I, week. I, I will say this. Let me, let me start this out. You're right, Jason. We've got top 10 tips and tricks tomorrow. My guys at the end of the week, Thursday live stream. I mean, this is fantasy football season. And I wish that we could give the listeners like the full experience of what is happening in our war room <laughs> of uh, I don't wish that with, with the uh, the selection of the my guys uh, and it's it look selecting a my guy it's it's a harrowing oh. task i mean you're putting your name you're saying these are three guys that i am trying to draft everywhere that i can i don't want to leave a draft without them and your name is associated with that player for the year it's a lot of pressure. It's it is a huge amount of pressure, and uh, you know, like I, I think last year I was going up to the wire. This year, thankfully, I have kind of I found my my three guys earlier on in the process, so I get to I'm just relaxing and You're watching, watching Andy and I. I'm watching just you two. Well, we have off the face. Of we the have earth. some final selection issues going on for yes, our last you my do. guys. Now, I think the strategy should be the Mike Wright special, which is. Which three players have the best chance of a season-long injury in week one to neither prove or disprove my actual take? Look, it's called the Blake Jarwin. The, if Blake Jarwin was incredible. 100% <laughs> catch rate. That's right. One for one. Um, okay. And then, and then Dalton Schultz was the proof of concept. Yeah, I mean, you don't have <laughs> uh, – you, you victory lap Jarwin. Yes. Yeah. Correctly so. Thank uh, you. We do have a, a, a segment before we get into our tight ends, and Brooksy – I don't know if you saw this. I mean, I, apparently I made some comments about the Detroit Lions yesterday on the show. Oh, yeah. I was trying to help you soften them, and you were like, no, they're, they're the worst. They suck. I just wanted to kind of come out and apologize <laughs> to the Lions fans. But, like, Brooksy, you're, you're a, a, Michi is it a Michigander. Is that the – That's right. That is? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Michi like, have a gander at a Michigander? I mean, so you're from that land, right? Yes, so, and even not as a Lions fan, like I rooted for them, but you could just feel the the wait, wait, years of sadness. So we're our 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 source here. Yeah, our our star reporter is someone from Michigan who's like, I wasn't really a Lions fan. <laughs> is that how everybody? That's what I mean. You can feel the Lion, the sad, the collective sadness of the Lions fans for, for years. So did and, you relate to? I mean, did you feel like? The comment about them them being the Adam Gaze of franchises was a little over the top, though. Nah. Okay. That's actually what I've heard from more people. They're all like, "Yeah, we know. Oh, oh, we was, know." It was fine until you said Adam Gaze. Yeah, I mean, there were some people that were not happy. Look, that does take it to the next. Yeah, level. I was gonna say if you say this, it's the worst. It's trash. It's just a a, a, a black hole a of desperation time. and and a terribly run franchise. That's all fine, but mm -hmm. you call it Adam Gase. Mm -hmm. That's too far. That is so, way too far. That's fair. Number two. Thank yeah, you. Oh, there he is. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. I can't wait for these discussions. Every week we're looking at what's going on in camp camp hype preseason hype now and we're deciding look is this just smoke or is this fire number one. Oh gosh all right the texans backfield kind of went through the offseason maybe incorrectly putting david johnson atop the depth chart they added philip Lindsay. they added mark ingram they added rex burkhead it was kind of a running gag, right? Like the amount of bodies to the wide receiver and running back rooms in Houston. But now, in the last week and a half, you know, Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram were listed as co-starters. David Johnson was not listed as a starter. You look at preseason week one, Philip Lindsay had eight of ten reps with the first team offense. David Johnson saw the field on the third down opportunities. The team came out and said they're going to use David Johnson like Duke Johnson. Is there smoke? Is there fire? When the 
when the depth chart came out, it seemed rather smoky. It seemed like this is not something I'm going to get up in arms about. I didn't adjust my rankings yet because we have seen all sorts of weird things over the years with depth charts. They are borderline useless, especially when the the team released depth charts are like, you don't know what they're just doing for morale that has nothing to do with what's going to be on Sometimes the field. Sometimes the veterans get, Ex get, you know. Exactly. And then the preseason hit and you're like, oh, wait. This is fire. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is definitely fire. Lindsey had yes. eight of ten reps with the first team offense and he seems like he's the first and second down back, which is not to say that instead of drafting David Johnson, you should draft Philip Lindsay. This is to say, in my opinion, that uh, the fire be too hot. You go and get burned. Don't draft anybody because David Johnson is still the pass catching back. That's not Philip Lindsay's cup of tea. That's not what he excels at. And he's not a real great. You went with a cup of tea. Look, I'm trying new things on. You inspired me, Mike. Oh, cup okay. of tea. I might try cup it a couple more times. Cup of tea is a new times. catchphrase. That's that's what cup I'm looking of tea. at. I'm trying to go. You're going masculine. I'm going kind of British. Okay. I'm trying to look for a couple British catchphrases. <laughs> as in British is not masculine. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So yeah, oh, you no. see exactly what I'm saying. Well, um, no, I think cup of tea is generally not necessarily right. That's in not, the masculine category. I like a good cup of tea. I do too. Sure, but you guys, you don't, you don't flex that one. You, <laughs> you want to sit down and have a cup of tea? Uh, anyway, well, if you say it like that, now I'm in. Uh, so this is not like a cup of tea is very high tea. This is this is oh, not oh the Dan Campbell cup of <laughs> yeah. tea. That's uh, different. Not Philip Lindsay's. <laughs> it's only from a lab specialty. <laughs> um, and so I think what you're going to see here is you're going to see David Johnson with the valuable reception work in a crappy offense and not enough of it to be valuable for fantasy. And you're going to see Philip Lindsay do the between the twenties run the ball. He's good at that. And for a bad team and it's not going to be worth it. And then for, for, uh, for giggles, they'll probably bring Mark Ingram <laughs> in on the goal line just to be like, ha ah, ha, you can't have anything. So I'm for giggles. I am staying. Get away. him out there for giggles. Well, look, there was a longer phrase I was going to say, but <laughs> It for, didn't for poop and giggles. Yes, for poop and giggles, but uh, it didn't quite. Uh, give me Philip Lindsay late in drafts. Really? If, if Mike's gonna sit here and give me the Damian Harris uh, preaching each and every week, guaranteed touches mm -hmm. on a team that might not have the goal line work and the passing game work, give me Philip Lindsay in the twelfth round, please, because I want some guaranteed touches in case I have running backs get hurt, bye weeks. I, How many games do you think the Patriots are going to win? More than the Texans, but that doesn't but mean double I double more or yeah, double more. Okay, <laughs> so, if, so if you are the as they say, so if you are the non-pass catching running back, you need to be on a winning team. A losing team, non-pass catching running back. I can't imagine Look, how those were, touches matter for fantasy. There were there were games in which you could have started Lamichael P. Ryan of the Jets last year, or some of these teams that were. You know, look at the Jacksonville. I mean, look at look at uh, James Robinson on the worst team but, in football. Yeah, but he got he, all of yeah. the work and caught the ball and had the goal line. Like he yeah. had the, he had everything to himself. Uh, look, if I we got tips and tricks this week. Here's a little a bonus tips Ooh, and tricks. Number eleven. If you can get guaranteed touches at running back anywhere in the draft, I'm all about it. So if this isn't fire, the Texans are really really committed to this gag. Because you had a quote from David Johnson, quote, obviously as it's going on in the moment, it's tough. Oof. But I th I think in the long run, it will just help out the team as a whole. End oh, quote. no. So that is, that is a man who is completely resigned that he is – he's this third down guy. Phil he's Blinzy, not getting that role. Phil Lindsay is the starter. Yeah, so, yeah, Oof. I'm with you guys that this is fire. Uh I don't think the off. I don't. I don't believe going through the off season projecting that David Johnson was going to be the starter was incorrect. Uh, I, it is now. I get it. But well, how he was, could he you, was better last year? He, yes, he bounced back. He but, was. He was fine. He was efficient. He was a solid player. And then you go get a. You go get Philip Lindsay, and you're like, oh no, that's our starter. That's a bizarre move. I, I think a lot of this could deal with age. I mean, this is a team that is not playing for the year and now. They're playing for the future. Isn't and is he old though? No, he's twenty seven. He's, he's certainly not, uh, not he's as old as than, David Johnson. He's younger than David Johnson. David Johnson's going to hit thirty by the time next season okay. rolls around, okay. and so that's not 
that they're not building a team around David Johnson. Plus, I think that the fan base and the town and everything realizes David Johnson is the physical representation of the loss of DeAndre Hopkins. It's uh, that trade. Wow, great, great for us was equally <laughs> ungrateful for them. As much as I'd love to talk Lindsey David Johnson the entire show, we'll move on here. Um, but we all agree fire on that one. Number two, yeah. Robert Tunyon drew rave reviews from Packers tight end coach uh, on Sunday. They said he's not reached his ceiling yet. He was the tight end three last year. But so I guess the question is, Smoker fire here. Did he reach his fantasy ceiling last year, even if he may be more productive, more total catches? He had a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, I, I, I think this is smoke. I mean, this is a tight ends coach saying, hey, my tight end, he's got even more to give. Well, yeah, that's what, that's what they're all going to say. Like, has he reached his potential yet? No, probably as an NFL player, he hasn't. But does that yeah, unless mean... Unless you're the Jacksonville tight end coach right now with Mr. Tebow? Right, Tebow has reached a ceiling and has been released. Um, oh. But the uh, – yeah, I mean, this is something where his touchdown rate, Robert Tunyon's touchdown rate, was so high last year. Uh, we've talked about, you know, the forthcoming regression on passing touchdown volume for the Packers. That will come down a little bit, and you thought, well, it's going to be fine if he can be more involved in the offense, get a higher – uh, you know, target rate, but then they brought in Randall Cobb. And while Randall Cobb is, you know, not going to set the world on fire, he is the trusted outlet second uh, look for Aaron Rodgers. And I think that that just kind of caps that hopeful, like maybe Tunyon will, could have come up close to that number two in targets. I don't think that happens anymore with Randall Cobb. So for fantasy purposes, I, I don't think there's any fire here. It's a good point with Cobb. I hadn't thought about his impact on Tunyon yes. yeah, volume-wise. And Devin Funches this this preseason, finally coming back after two years of being signed by the Packers and not playing. Uh, I'm with you. Smoke. Yeah. yeah I, I have nothing to add to this conversation, and I'm going to throw an audible in here for us. because You got this, a third one? I got a third one. This is this is hot off Omaha. Of Twitter. This is hot off Twitter, and this I'm bringing it up specifically because this thing is going to <laughs> – catch the rounds this is a uh, uh this is a flammable piece of content here this is from uh twitter jp finley who is a reporter out of washington kyle allen says washington is trying to push antonio gibson into a similar role as christian mccaffrey played in carolina okay okay so smoke or fire smoke or fire Have uh, a little this smoke was I mean, the Embers were there last year with yes. this exact comparison. The, the Embers were there. They started right after the draft. You did not see Antonio Gibson on third down last year. You did not see Antonio Gibson on third down in the the limited amount of work. But you have you have one of the quarterbacks on the team saying this is this is what it looks like they're doing. Look, it's getting hot. Um, it's getting, I'm getting hot. And I'm getting bothered. So, but but at this point, you're just gonna say that that's just that's hot smoke until <laughs> hot <laughs> smoke. Hot, hot smoke. Um, look until you see him in on third downs on a regular basis, you 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 you're not gonna see the flames yet. So I I have to say smoke. But I I brought this up on another show. That's what I'm watching for pretty much more than anything in week two of preseason is Antonio Gibson's passing work and specifically his third down utilization versus J.D. McKissick because I do feel confident that he's going to grow in his pass catching role. However, um, if J.D. McKissick is really truly utilized for his skill set on third down, then that caps that growth um, and we should not utter the name CMC in comparison. Yeah, I there's a difference between thinking they should do that, which I believe and whether they will do it. I think I saw a tweet, and I don't remember who to give credit for, but the tweet was something to the extent of, uh, I'm afraid that Washington believes that J.D. McKissick is one of the best pass-catching running backs in football. Um, and the, oh, oh, my gosh, he got, got us. Got. He got us. <laughs> Smooches, McKissick. Oh, um, goodness. And I, I brought it up. I mean, he, what, 81 receptions yeah. last year? So I don't think CMC is the right name to utter even if the role increases it's got to go to the moon right for him to get that CMC role 
But does it, you know, does the possibility of fire here split the difference when you're deciding between Gibson and Clyde or Gibson and Mixon right. or Gibson? Like, Mike, would you take Gibson or Joe Mixon? Uh, I would take Gibson. Uh, okay. but that, that's, that's what a, your rankings that's, say. That's so. a, it's a very tough decision. And, and I mean, I only, we've already kind of talked about this as a possibility. I'm just bringing this up as like Jason, you're saying, I need to see the third down. It's too late. What? Like if you are, if you're going into drafts, you know, very soon and you see that you see the confirmation of it, it's done. Like you're, you're too late now. So I'm just, that's why you got to kind of make your decision if you're buying into the Smoke the hot smoke or the fire. <laughs> I th I, well, then if I've got to if hot I've got to decide right now, I'm going to stick with hot smoke. It's in between. All right. All right. It really is. It's one of those things where I fully expect his passing work utilization to go north, but not north to the tune of uh, you know eighty, ninety, a hundred targets. I, I don't I don't think that's happening for him. I'll call it warm smoke on my side. Okay, Mike, what is it for you? Yes, that's some hot smoke. All right, all right. So no fire yet. All right, that was. I don't want to get out of control. I got. Yeah, I, I know. Got, I'm doing some deep breathing over here, fellas. It's the reasonable, smart thing to do. You know, you have to take it. One thing that holds me but back. It's, but it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> I I brought it up too. It holds me back that you know, he did deal with some injury. There's so much fire. What kind of? <laughs> uh, can, Look, can, no, can, can, can you please, whisper it? We cannot be held please accountable. Please continue, Andy. <laughs> Uh, talking about uh, yeah. the, what a kind realistic of outlook, give a realistic outlook for Gibson. He's going to be so on fire. <laughs> He's going to go nuclear. <laughs> what what were you saying? Uh, nothing. <laughs> okay. Nothing. Number one overall. Uh, that was where there's smoke, there's fire presented by Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup. Mm -hmm. Make every game day more delicious. Mm -hmm. Head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover just how simple wood fired cooking can be i'm gonna blitz this news news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper aaron jones returned to practice monday that's good news that's great news melvin gordon ah, he ah. suffered a groin injury believed to be minor uh we'll see how we'll see if he makes groinindex.com or not bills no, in just thrown in i mean he got. He better get on the field. Javante looked very good. Oh yeah, we didn't. We didn't really talk about Javante in preseason, but he did look good to me. He looked good. Yeah. Uh, Sean McDermott I mean, against backups, but yeah, what <laughs> you that those are always such interesting. I mean, it's right to caveat it. Yeah, but at the same time, he had no choice. I yes, that's why. So, I, like that's why it was a throw. You would want to him go. to look good against the like he. There was also the outlook where he comes in against backups and, and looks yes. mediocre, and that didn't happen. And he can't come out there and be like, come back in here, starters. <laughs> uh, Stephon Diggs, right now, head coach Sean McDermott, not concerned that it will linger into the – the knee injury will linger into the regular season. Okay. So keep, a, keep an eye on that. Dak did return to practice, so he threw on consecutive days. That could be – That's great news. Very good news. Uh, Alfred Morris was released by the Giants and Jacksonville released Tim Tebow. The final wave goodbye for Tim Tebow. Never would have had a shot at this if it wasn't for Urban Meyer, his collegiate head coach, giving mm -hmm. him the shot. But uh, Unfortunately for Tebow, he showed the rest of the NFL what he can do as a tight end. He might have been able to make it in this role 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely. I think if he switched to tight end early in the – look at Logan Thomas. Logan yeah. Thomas was a quarterback, and it took him years to transition to tight end. It's why rookie tight ends don't hit. There is a skill to learn. It's not just are you physically big and fast and strong. It's like there's a skill to learn here um, for, for rookie tight ends, no matter how old you are as a rookie. So does this kind of squash your own personal aspirations to potentially – you know, play tight end. No, oh, I just need a couple of years. Once, give me a shot, but give me a three-year shot is what I would ask for. Okay, a three-year chance, and you'll be how old then? I'd be a, I'd be a, be twenty-two <laughs> years old mm -hmm. in three years for sure. All right, that was today's news and notes. Brought to you as always by Sleeper, the largest dynasty platform out there. We just got our friends and family league set up again. I did not get the draft pick I wanted. That's okay. It's okay, I can customize the league, right? So that means I can put myself higher in the draft order. Mm -hmm. maybe? Yeah, it's a great place to, 
to play your fantasy <laughs> leagues. Start your fantasy leagues over on Sleeper for sure. Um, also, before we get into the tight ends, want to thank all of our sponsors oh, can't wait. today. Want to thank Head and Shoulders. Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology is never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. We just had uh, this last Thursday our never not working yeah, segment, the debut, which was incredible. People loved that. Talking about second and third round rookie running backs, how they fare against their uh, incumbents, how that uh, affects what you should do with guys like Javante. You want to go back and listen to that last Thursday. Yeah, and I made some great points in that segment. That's you a good, you that's a good truly point. did. Almost <laughs> as good as mine. Dude, I listened to so many good points in that segment, <laughs> and I really think I was proud of the work <laughs> that I did with my ears. Listen to this Thursday's Head & Shoulders segment because it's going to be fantastic. Regular use of head and shoulder scalp shield technology. It provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, protection, dryness. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Foot Clan, today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? There's no shame in that game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's... You should always strive to improve yourself and improve your mental health, and BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions sessions. So you don't have to sit in the uncomfortable waiting room with traditional therapy. We have heard from some of the Foot Clan out there, and they've said, look, I've reached out to better help. I got connected with a counselor, and I'm working on it, and things are improving. You, It can get better. You just have to choose to work on it, and BetterHelp is a great way to do that. Visit BetterHelp.com slash footballers. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month. BetterHelp.com slash footballers. Tight ends. <laughs> Very aggressive. <laughs> uh, all right, tight ends. The last ranking show, right, Brooksy? Oh, yeah. Unless you want to do a tight ends part two. No, oh. no, thank you. No, no, there is no part two to the tight end position. Or top ten kickers? Uh, no, no, thank you. No, enough with your suggestions. Okay. Just pull the levers over there, okay? Top ten tight end rankings are consensus top ten by half PPR scoring. Uh, last year was a good year for a handful of tight ends. I mean, super efficient in the red zone. 31% of tight end touchdowns occurred there. That is the most in the last decade. So teams were looking to the tight end in the red zone, those high-value targets, and you even had some low-volume guys with big years. Uh, yeah, we talk about Robert Tunyon, the tight end three with the touchdowns, but look, Jimmy Grandpa had, what, eight He's, touchdowns last year? Yeah. Uh, John New Smith, Rob Gronkowski, even Jared Kuk last year we're low volume, high efficiency tight ends. So today we'll talk about our top 10. We'll talk about the separation between the elite tier and we'll talk about some guys we think could jump into that range. I mean, Tunyon was an example of somebody that made a big fantasy impact, late draft pick, um, waiver wire pickup type of player. And this is what, that's everything. That's everything when you're drafting the tight end. Uh, we've been we've been recommending all off season. Try to get one of the elites. Try to get one of the big three, Kelsey Waller, uh, George Kittle. Don't forget about George Kittle, even though he didn't finish very high. And maybe Mark Andrews can sneak into that crew. But otherwise, if you don't get one of them, you don't settle. Don't don't settle for your guy in, in the middle rounds. You think, well, he's going to be fine. I, I need a starter at the tight end position. He'll be okay. He'll get me some points. No. Go after someone that you – believe can actually make that jump into becoming a a true top five tight end because otherwise you're just you're you're wasting your pick yeah there there are I think six players that you can have an argument about 
drafting with capital. So obviously the big three, meaning three other players that we should have a discussion today about whether we would be willing, and I and I think each person on their own needs to decide, are they willing to take a shot at the, in those middle rounds? And that would be Mark Andrews, uh, Kyle Pitts, and TJ Hawkinson, whether or not those are worth it. And then outside of that, if you decide that you, they aren't worth the shot, just go late. Yeah, and, and, and in my opinion, you go late with the upside. Like Mike said, you go late with somebody that, you know, well, we'll get into the names, yeah. yes. and then we'll go from there. Our seventh pick, the guy after that, is being drafted in double-digit rounds as the last tight end. So, yeah, we're good. Travis Kelsey is number one on the rankings. Not a surprise. 105 for 1,411. Goodness gracious. The tight end one. And if you look at the game log, like we have the consistency charts in the ultimate draft kit. You get to see week by week. It's mesmerizing to see what he did for your fantasy team. Green is uh, good. I mean, he had he had a run where four of six weeks, including three in a row, he was the number one on the week. Um, he had five number one overall finishes. You know, he just won you weeks at the position, and the advantage when you got one of those games was so massive over your opponent. That's why we've been – this has been the year of the, the first-round tight end pick for us. If, if you're late in the first round, just go Kelsey. You're not going to be – sad Kelsey cannot bust outside of injury like he can everybody that you draft in the first round can have a season ender and you lose your first round pick you're gonna have to roll with the punches and figure out how to scrap and claw your way to the playoffs still win that championship losing your first round pick you could do it we've all done it before but outside of that happening to to Kelsey there is no way on the planet that he's not a great pick he is the number one target for the number one quarterback in the number one offense with the best offensive mind at uh, head coach and, and, you know, the offensive coordinating system. The last five years, he was the tight end one, the tight end one, the tight end one, the tight end one, and the tight end one. So he good. Um, so the bigger discussion then is not – we're not breaking news that Kelsey is good. Mm -hmm. The bigger discussion is how do you view him in a dynasty league because everyone okay. wants to know when you – you know, when do you trade him in for a newer model, so to speak. <laughs> oh, that's – well, I mean that's 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 <laughs> the I truth. Know, I know. I mean, I, I've the seen NFL a lot of tough. I've seen a lot of those questions of should I trade Travis Kelsey for Kyle Pitts? Do I, you know, in a Absolutely. dynasty league? And that's a question of well, can you win the championship this year? Because if you can, keep uh, I would keep Travis Kelsey. I would go win a championship. Well, there's some good research here. Tony Gonzalez had a tight end one finish in his age 32 season. That is what Kelsey is going to be going into here. Uh, turns 32 in week five of this season. He actually, Tony Gonzalez ended up with four more top five seasons yeah, that's incredible. after age 32. Tony Gonzalez is not, you know, every tight end out there, Jimmy Grandpa being an example of one that didn't do that. But haven't seen a sign of Kelsey slowing down, and the quarterback is there for the next 10 years. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about Tony Gonzalez, you're like, well, that's not fair. He's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, uh, yeah. So I is Travis Kelsey. I think we've already gotten there with Kelsey. Exactly right. I, if he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, then... So what about if you're not, you know, what if you're in the middle and you're kind of competing? You don't know if you have a shot in Dynasty. Are you viewing Kelsey? What window are you looking at him through? Like, uh, is it a five-year or three-year? I, I would give him a three-year window, which is what we say is always good enough. Which for means I keep him. Yeah, that means I keep him. I would not trade him for Kyle Pitts straight up. If I am a completely rebuilding team that, uh, look, my team, it just does not have a chance to win. I'm not going to even make the playoffs this year. I'm playing for the future. Then, sure, I, I might be willing to make that move. Um, but you keep him right now. All right, number two is oh, oh, well, he's Walrus. feeling good, right? Yeah. Are we he's, okay there? Yeah, he's back. So Darren Waller comes in at number two. Um, we all have him at two. Last year he was the third. He was an early third last year, or is that this year? That's this year. Okay. No, last year he was. Oh a, yeah, people doubted fifth. the volume yeah. last year. Well, yeah. Um. So, what's the discussion around Darren Waller? The doubt has been removed. Jason and I were talking in the studio yesterday. Derek Carr, I mean, he didn't come up on the first or second episode of the quarterback rankings and for I'm, some reason. I'm not sorry. Well, you cannot be sorry, but that is the sentiment. In a, in a 
nutshell. Mm-hmm. He always is better than that, and he's actually playable in a lot of leagues on a lot of weeks. You can't make me. Uh, well, all <laughs> if right. If you're in a super flex, <laughs> he's one of my three favorite targets for your third quarterback. But the point is, is that he is good enough as an NFL quarterback to be to give you confidence in – Darren Waller. Darren Waller is great. If you're in any kind of half PPR or full PPR league, that's where when you're looking at Darren Waller versus George Kittle, you know, I I, I made the transition more recently. Like you guys had Darren Waller as your number two pretty much the whole offseason. I had George Kittle as my number two, but questions with the targets and and Ayuk and Debo and uh, potentially a rookie coming in. There's no questions here with Darren Waller. He is the number one target for this team. Uh, we've seen it in multiple years. He's got the athleticism that's through the roof. So I, I don't I don't think there's anything to dislike. In fact, I, I question whether or not, like I would rather, I talked to you, Mike, about this when we were doing our, our last mock draft show and you had, I think, the sixth pick. If you are in the middle of the first round, that's where it's like, okay, you might be at the seven spot. And that's where a lot of people are deciding. Do I take Travis Kelsey there? Mm -hmm. Personally, I would rather grab an Aaron Jones or a great running back there and then grab Darren Waller in the third round, just like you did in your mock. You've still got a positional advantage, but you're stocking up on the more important position. So I love Waller this year. That's where I was going to ask. I mean, Darren Waller, incredible season, 24 red zone targets, over 27% of the team's targets, which is – that's absurd for a tight end. But he's not – He's not Travis Kelsey. Uh, like he has in some inconsistent weeks. He was on fire to end the season, but I mean you you have uh, what? 5 games where he wasn't even a top 12 tight end on the week. You know, then that's that's pretty disappointing for a tight end that you drafted in the 3rd round to finish outside of the top I'm 12 com- that many times. I'm just completely I'm completely stuck on D- Derek Carr deep dive over here. <laughs> oh no! I, I'm staring at this. Don't do it. He is never. This is eighth season. He's uh-huh. never finished as low as we have him ranked this year. Ever. He had his best season finish ever last year. His last seven games, he was on 4,800 yard pace. Last year, he finished as the quarterback 13. He never misses a game. And now he's got Terrell. Well, I mean Randy. Ma- I mean uh, Brian Edwards. So you promised yourself no, you weren't going to do this it anymore, is Andy. Just I, four thousand plus yards for three consecutive years. Abort. I love it, man. Get hot for dinner. No, well, I, I guess early, early exam. I'm not hot for him. I think I'm just, Friday. I think I, we know one of the yeah. players now. No, we do not. Yep. My God, we Derek do not Carr know, for Andy Hall. Uh, one of those players, although. Send in the car. Send in sorry, the car. Sorry, sorry, Darren Waller. One. Darren Waller, tight ends. Yeah, that was that was going to be the question of if, when discussing these two players. Your strategy in a draft in the would you rather leave the draft with in the and uh, Jason answered it. Would you rather be Aaron Jones and Darren Waller, or would you rather be Travis Kelsey and let's go? Uh, we'll just go running back to running back. We'll go. Oh, but that's Travis or uh, Kelsey and Clyde. <laughs> I stop myself because they're both on the same team. Well, Clyde is not usually making it to the middle of the third, so I think more fair. Well, if I'm we're saying going y- middle of the third, it would be someone like David Montgomery. Okay, so Kelsey and Montgomery, or Aaron Jones and Darren Waller, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really close. It's really close. What I, if I told you? I guess Kelsey. I think Kelsey is is a. Yeah, I'll go Kelsey Montgomery. What if I told you that if you draft Darren Waller, you can stack him with Derek Carr? And well, I mean, and no one in our sure. league will stop you. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it the day before kickoff. You can just go right to that waiver and say, "I'm rolling this." Stack. I feel like I'm being tricked. Uh, yeah, I mean that that's tough. That's tough. I mean the the consistency of Kelsey versus Waller it was a the, it was a vast disparity. Both of these are good starts, and I I think this is where um we should at least remind people or illuminate the concept that if you are going after one of these guys, we're about to talk about George Kittle. But if you're going after Waller, Kelsey, Kittle, and you're spending that high end capital, right? We're talking about you're giving up Aaron Jones, or you're giving up a David Montgomery, or you're giving up, you know, a, a Calvin Ridley to to take a tight end. Don't also draft an early quarterback. That would be our recommendation mm-hmm. because if you're taking two of your first five picks away from running back and wide receiver. Yeah, you. I mean, you'll have Lamar Jackson and and 
Travis Kelsey and they'll be great, but your running backs and wide receivers as the season goes on are going to be really, really hurting. And those are the positions that are far more difficult to figure out on the fly as the season goes on. Kittle's at three. Uh, the difference for me, I mean, it's it's minor, but the injuries do factor in. I mean, he dealt with injuries two separate times last year. He also dealt with a knee injury the year before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's just the aggression with which he plays. It probably is. I mean, he has reminded me of Thomas Rawls out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. He he is just a, a very aggressive uh, player with the ball in his hands. It's one of the things you love about him. It's what let him break the yardage record, but it's also something that has cost him starts in the last couple of seasons. So that's the difference between them for me. Uh, just a little bit of concern about re-injury. And I would say the my little bit of concern is it was George Kittle, I still think, is the number one weapon for the this team. But if you happen to have both wide receivers for San Francisco be healthy, we, like, we've seen Debo take over games, and now we have seen Brandon Ayuk take over games. Yeah, that's This is a little bit of a different scenario for George Kittle. And this is not saying I'm avoiding George Kittle, but just saying I have him at my number three because I have a little bit of health concerns for him and the fact that these other two guys can step in and uh, – and remove George Kittle from uh, being the star. I mean, you have so I'm throwing we out. Haven't, we haven't seen all three of them on the field together. Exactly Ex at full health, very much. Exactly. And then in the uh, last year, I mean, I'm throwing out the week one. In, well, I guess you shouldn't because he played 98 percent of the snaps. He was the tight end 17 in week one, and then once he finally came back from his injury, he had two top two finishes. But then the other three games, he was tight end 15. Or worse. Yeah, I mean, he was he was obviously so playing he, injured, but yeah. in that bad season, in that bad season, he was on a seventeen game pace of one thousand three hundred and forty seven yeah, yards. Great. The two previous seasons, he was the tight end three and the tight end two. This is a guy who can easily go out there and hit twelve hundred yards at tight end. And what's crazy is that his career high in touchdowns is five. This is not a tight end who wow. is making his uh, mark around the end zone like a lot of he's touchdowns not, are not his cup of tea it, right uh you know he, but it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be the bee's knees <laughs> if um he ends up with eight or nine touchdowns because his his body style his athleticism it would be hot to trot. yeah so my my point is i don't think these are british phrases <laughs> i the bee's knees is a british phrase it is that's why i threw it out there really yeah oh yeah now, good work <laughs> good work um, here, here's the he thing, though. Google British phrases. You're darn right, I did. Ooh, <laughs> you I'm, think I knew that the bees knees was a British phrase? I'm getting in on this. I didn't know this that. show. Yeah, I didn't either. But we're here to educate people out there getting knackered over all these. Uh, That's right. References. What a smashing uh, use of the word knackered, Jason. After that analysis, I'm chuffed to bits. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, Brooks, can you put on <laughs> some tea? for us uh, we're yeah. gonna need that when the show's over uh my point is that there is built-in upside to Kittle that I mean if any of these seasons where he has 1200 1300 yards if he ends up with eight or nine touchdowns he, he's Travis Kelsey so yeah the upside is there if he falls a little bit in drafts because of the injury risk or because of also Waller taking the number two spot the high potential that he'll have a rookie quarterback as throwing him the ball eventually in the season. Yeah, yeah. Bloody good analysis, Jason. Oh, thank you. Um, I, did, I did throw a poll up earlier this morning because I was curious uh, about the highest odds of starting week one between uh, yeah, Justin I, I Fields, Trey Lance, and Mac Jones. Yeah, preseason game one has shifted things for people. Justin Fields is at 51%, and Trey Lance and Mac Jones are identical at 24% each. So uh, Mark Andrews comes in at 4 Mark Andrews is just, I mean, four is his and his alone. Mm -hmm. Like, he just sits there in his own oh, no. number four spot. This is a huge average draft position drop between the top three, too. You got a two-round gap between where Kittle and Waller are going, and then Andrews and Hawkinson sit in the fifth round. Yeah. I, so, I, I, Andrews I, is, I mean, back-to-back -back top five t fantasy tight end. Simple question, are you drafting Mark Andrews, period? Yes, Okay, you are in the fifth round. You're drafting Mark Andrews. I'm I'm fine with it. I am I am also fine with dra drafting Mark Andrews or T.J. Hawkinson, both fifth round guys. 
Um, most of the time when I'm doing my real drafts or even my mocks that I'm really trying to take a look at what I want my roster to build, there is a player or two in the fifth round that I just can't pass. Someone like, you know, if, if I'm at the 509 where TJ Hawkinson is going and Tyler Lockett is there, I think he's just too valuable to pass up for sure. a, a guy, you know, a guy that I do think is going to break out. Like, um, I, I'll, I'll be honest on my board has been TJ Hawkinson for my my guy on Friday because I fully believe that the breakout is going to come. I think he could be a 140 target guy. He's going to be the clear number one target for this offense. He was one of my favorite things, drafted to be great, top 10 NFL draft pick. He's been good. The, everything says TJ Hawkinson is going to have a good season, um, but not necessarily a great season. You know, obviously what Travis Kelsey can do is – there's no limit, but there is a limit when you're talking about Jared Goff, when you're talking about the Detroit Lions offense. Um, I am willing to draft either one of those guys. And obviously getting back to Mark Andrews, our, our tight end four, um, right now, Marquise Brown, not on the field. Mm -hmm. Rashad Bateman out for several weeks. Uh, you've got Sammy Watkins just, you know. Yeah, I, a I, lizard injury. Yeah, he, he hurt his tail. So it's like. <laughs> those don't Those don't really factor in for me. Sure, but my because two thirds of them weren't there last year, and and Hollywood's dealt with injuries before. That pie doesn't seem to expand for Andrews, and we've given him that shot. Yeah, my my point is just he is the guy right now that continues building rapport. And if you want to talk about a connection that's locked in, and who you know, there's been all this conversation. Who's the one? Is it going to be the one? Is Mark Andrews in that offense? I think. I, do you guys see someone else out targeting Mark Andrews in this offense? I do not. Uh, 88 targets last year in 14 games. Probably I, I not. Probably not. I think if, if Bateman had been healthy, I would be thinking about it, but, um, just cause what he represents possession wise, but no, you're right. I mean, Andrews is the top target on the teeny pie team and there's nothing wrong with putting him in your lineup, but in the fifth round, you pick between Andrews Hawkinson and Kyle Pitts, you know, these three guys are all going in that round. And uh, do, you, do you give any, Andrews is not the one I pick. Okay, then I'll go to Jason. I'm, it, I guess you've you've already answered it because you want Tyler Lock in the fifth, which I do as well. Would you consider? Uh, and I know this goes against the don't go quarterback and tight end early, but would you consider for an upside team? You're on the turn on the four or five turn, going Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Um, I, like on that on a weekly basis, your upside is your team can explode. Yes, your your upside is is massive. You can explode, and I I love a good stack. I would much rather build that stack via you know if, if you're in a keeper league where you got to keep Andrews, you got to keep Lamar late. Spending both a fourth and a fifth on you know I'm going to be talking about stacking on tomorrow's episode. Okay, and I the way that I approach stacking for a redraft league draft capital is going to factor in pretty heavily. So I would not spend a fourth and a fifth together to okay. stack. Yeah. Andrews feels a little bit like a, like a pricier Tunyon bet. Like I'd rather take the Tunyon chance. I mean, we've seen three years of Mark Andrews, 34, 64, 58 reception wise. Um, and I just remember spending all of off season last year going, boy, what if that volume went up and it doesn't seem like it. Uh, um, Hawkinson's at five, Kyle Pitts at six. I kind of want to talk about these guys together. Okay. Hawkinson is, I mean, he has upside, but I'm not, I'm not willing to spin the fifth round pick on him. I will, I will say this. I, I, I get that the new hotness, the, uh, the questionable upside of the greatest player of all time and Kyle Pitts, we've had discussions through the <laughs> off season and you're saying, well, I want to swing for the fences, get someone who could be the number one guy. Kyle Pitts cannot be that. It's just, it's just True. flat out impossible. And I'm not saying that Hawkinson can, uh, but my point is, Hawkinson. Like, if I had to, I would love to take any and all water bets of Hawkinson versus Pitts. So if you guys want in on that, I will take them. I Ooh, see. Oh, wow. please. Oh. Well, I mean, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, great. I mean, that's that's Please. what my rankings say. Water bet. But they also say that right now. I mean, you might have a update later i bet based on complete <laughs> factual evidence of all today. right so we uh obviously we we looked and um, i always bet against jason 
Andy and I, we, we did a deep dive, deep dive yesterday in the office on Kyle Pitts, looking at what it would take to reproduce and, and get to a good enough value to be drafted in this range. And we all know it would take the best rookie tight end season of all time. But we wanted to know how much higher, how much better would it really take. It would be astronomically higher. I mean, so much higher than any other rookie tight end in history. You're talking like, can you take? <laughs> you're talking about 25% <laughs> oh, of the no. best rookie season ever. If you add that on to the best rookie season ever, then you get to where he's an acceptable pick in this range. Whereas you're talking about TJ Hawkinson, who is the he was the tight end four last year while being injured and dealing with uh, obviously the same poor team. He was one of five tight ends to have 100-plus targets. And now you got rid of Marvin Jones. You got rid of Kenny Galladay. He is the number one target going into his third year. TJ Hawkinson is going to break out this year. Whether or not his breakout is worth the draft capital, I will say this. If you are someone who hates streaming tight ends, hates trying to figure out the matchups, the plays, the this and that, then it is worth it for you to, to, to save your fab dollars, to save your transaction counts through through the year if you're on a waiver priority system. Um, then I think that that is worth it because I, I can't see him having fewer than 125 targets, and that's just enough volume if you're in a half PPR, full PPR league. Yeah, I, I don't. I think you're going to see more of the same from Hawkinson as last year. Um, Matthew Stafford, we've talked a lot about him on the recent shows. He's a better quarterback than Jared Goff. Um, and you know, last year I know he was banged up and Hawkinson's this, you know, valuable player, uh, in terms of check downs and things like that. But the reason I like Kyle Pitts more is I see a thousand plus yards for Kyle Pitts in his rookie season. You have the absence, the target vacuum of Julio Jones. You have a player that's essentially a wide receiver. You have to think of Kyle Pitts as a wide receiver. We went back yesterday. Like you said, I agree with everything that we were talking about yesterday in terms of what the ceiling looks like. Calvin Ridley's rookie season was 175 fantasy points. I think I have Kyle Pitts at 179, but you've got to be in the 220-plus range to be the Kittle, Kelsey difference maker for the team. That being said, 1,000-plus yards for Kyle Pitts with some touchdown upside, I think you're going to get that. And I think your odds of touchdowns with Matt Ryan in that offense and what role he has to play, they're in camp. Kyle Pitts has looked the part. They're moving him around the formation. You cannot do those athletic things with TJ Hawkinson. You can't. And you got 700 yards last year in 16 games from TJ Hawkinson. That got you tight in four. I want more upside in the fifth round than TJ Hawkinson. And sure, uh, but TJ Hawkinson is an extreme athlete. Like he was. Yes. He's, uh, he is not Kyle Pitts. I agree. Kyle Pitts is. Because he's. Kyle Pitts is the only one. Yeah, he he breaks he breaks the mold. But I mean, if you're comparing Hawkinson against I've watched Hawkinson. the other top tier athletes, I'm just saying, athletically speaking, he's up there with you know your your George Kittles as a tight end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, six five, almost two hundred fifty pounds, and uh, like a four I mean, get, a four seven forty. You've got to watch him for two years, Mike. Do you look at T.J. Hawkinson two years at T.J. Hawkinson and say he delivered on on the what you expected? Or was it less than you expected? It was just eyeballs. I, I think he delivered what I expected. And b between the two, I if if I'm taking that tight end in the fifth round or the sixth round, somehow they both happen to be there. I would go Hawkinson. Of I I side more with Jason believing that Hawkinson is going to be the number one target for for the Detroit Lions, and I think that the upside is is there. I mean, maybe you're not getting the splash plays like from Kyle Pitts, but you won't see a splash play every single week. Meanwhile, you should see seven plus targets for Hawkinson every single week. Yeah. His cat, his yards per catch is lower than all those athletic explosion tight ends. You know, talking about Hawkinson. Yes. So just uh, one last point of clarity though, if that's the normal, like historical projection for all tight ends of all time is you get you you add to those things. So he's going into his third year, which is the normal breakout year for tight ends, and that's where it's like, yeah, he has not been great yet, but he was a rookie and he was a sophomore at, at a position where you don't usually do it that early. You do see splash plays earlier. You see them with Mark Andrews earlier, George Kittle earlier, Noah Fant earlier. 
he has gone down in yards per catch over the first two seasons. Had a lot of drops, a lot of penalties. A lot of drops, that's fair. A lot of, lot of 8. issues 8. with – 8 drop rate. My point is not that he can't – I mean, it, it's a tough position to break out in Detroit with a, with a worse quarterback, a different offensive system. Anthony Lynn is your, as your offensive coordinator. Uh, we just don't see Hawkinson's upside the same. That's all. And I, look at, I don't look at him as the athletic upside that, that a wide receiver Kyle Pitts has. They're not going to play Kyle Pitts in a traditional – tight end off the block situation they're going to run him all over the field and I like that potential better yeah I don't think we view his upside that differently I think we view his downs because I don't see him as getting into that Kelsey Kittle Waller tier I just, I just think he's going to be a really, really really safe wide receiver for uh you know last year he was about 100 targets I think that'll go up to 130 140 well we so. just bet on it there you go so we'll we'll settle it that way Higby at seven Higby is the tight end I am most likely to end up with on my team. Same. Uh, he is drafted in the 10th round. He is uh, a player that I think, ironically, you know, Matthew Stafford coming over from Detroit offers tremendous upside to. He has been a focal point of the offense for certain games in the past when Gerald Everett wasn't there, and we didn't just see average tight end play. We saw explosive tight end play. So this is the post-hype sleeper. Uh, of the year at the tight end position. I hope the draft – I don't think the draft price will go up. No, because he's Tyler Higby. He disappointed people last year. Yeah. He's been in the league long enough. He's We, we know his upside isn't going to be something uh, you know astronomically high. His draft capital will be in the 10th round, and I absolutely love it because you, you lost Gerald Everett. You lost Josh Reynolds. You brought in a better quarterback – Again, you you lost Cam Akers, where, you, I, where I think you're going to have to throw the ball more. Higby could get it done, and and I would much rather like again if Lockett and Hawkinson were there in the fifth, I would rather grab Ty, Tyler Higby late and stud out at wide receiver. You've seen the volume when Gerald Everett is out, Higby averages five targets a game, which you know I of course I'd prefer more, but that's solid, and you have. Uh, you have at least the proof of concept when you you go back to the two years ago where the, the the Higby hype really started rolling because he was Tyler Higbeast, where in 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 five straight weeks the tight end won three or uh, won five three nine one like he he turned into this waiver pickup that saved people uh, over the final stretch of the season so I'm I'm not overly bullish on Tyler Higby uh, as much as you guys are but. I think that he is – he's someone in the double-digit rounds that I believe can take that jump. So he, I'm perfectly fine drafting Higby. What about Robert Tunyon at eight? Right now he's eighth on our list. Uh, he's a round, a round ahead of Higby. Um, it hasn't gone – you know, for a guy that finished at tight end three, the ADP hasn't gone insane. A lot of that's been suppressed by Aaron Rodgers' question marks through the offseason – do you think he'll end up on any of your rosters? Yeah, I do. I've I've seen him end up on my rosters before. Even though I've got him at twelve, he's a value because um, the Aaron Rodgers thing. If Aaron Rodgers came back this off season and just was back, 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 he'd probably be easily the being drafted as the tight end. You know, six he'd, or seven he'd be in, he'd be that, in that, that range. Round. So um, yeah, I think he's a value, and I'm willing to draft him in the ninth. His his career arc is interesting because he was he was a smaller school guy. So a tight ends from smaller schools, it's it's tougher for them to get the get a fair shot. Even though he absolutely dominated, like he was a production machine in his college days. Goes undrafted, has to work his way up, and so I think that following the career arc, Tunyon can still be a, a higher level fantasy tight end to me. Yeah, I agree. And now we've finished all the good tight ends. <laughs> Mike Gesicki at nine. See? Dallas Goddard at 10. Mm -hmm. Not interested in either one. Me either. I Everything mean, here is choice over draft price, and the price is too high for both those players. Yeah, you actually have to pay a little bit more for those players. I mean, Dallas Goddard's going in the seventh round. That's because we, you know, in the his ADP got established when nobody thought Zach Ertz was going to be there. When Zach Ertz is going to be there, look, Dallas Goddard's a way better blocker than Ertz. The, Ertz, you know, in the first preseason game, he was running more routes than Goddard. It, it really stinks. I wanted Goddard as a breakout. Love him. 
But with Ertz there, no. Mike Kosicki, a lot was made about how, oh, man, they were using the tight end for the first preseason game in Miami. They didn't have Waddle. They didn't have Fuller. They didn't have any of their wide receivers. Of course they're using their tight end. Like well, they, they Waddle was out there, but they it, they used the tight end, but not a singular tight end. They were using the tight end position, like multiple guys, and Gasicki is not even out there for every single snap. Yeah, you're there, gonna have explosive plays, but then you're gonna have disappearing act. Yes. There are a few breakout calls you can try to make later in your draft. Uh guys like Big Irv. Uh, Irv Much Jr. more interested in talking about these guys. Yeah, Irv Jr., Noah Fant. Irv from the Minnesota Vikings. Big Irv Smith. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Noah Fant is going in the seventh round, so we didn't, you know, we don't have him ranked where the consensus community has him ranked, which, look, I see the path. I mean, if Drew Locke takes a step forward, which it's possible, or if Teddy Bridgewater brings some consistency, he had games last year. Um, at least he's young. At least he fits the mold. You know, Jason, you talked all about third year, TJ mm -hmm. Hawkinson, the breakout. Like Fant is a player that provides you big play upside on a regular basis. He checks a lot of the boxes. The 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 strikes against him are basically quarterback play and Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Just mm -hmm. to, the fact that he can't he's not gonna lead this team in targets. He's not gonna be second in this team in targets. So that's the downside here for, for fan, but the talent is certainly there. Troutman is going uh, in the 12th round, Mike. You've put him on the map. Yeah, he's, Adam Troutman, New Orleans Saints tight end. You have him at 10 overall. Yeah, and, and I've, if we've talked a lot about Adam Troutman, but it's, it, if you're just coming back to the show, tight end for the New Orleans Saints was a third-round pick a couple years ago. The team traded a lot to go and get him. And then they released Jared Cook and Josh Hill over the offseason and went all in on Adam Troutman. The first preseason game was concerning. Uh, he did not see a target. However, he was out there almost the entire game. So I'm not going... That might be more concerning. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. It's, it was troubling to, to not see him get a target. But uh, I'll wait until the preseason week two to you know, start making some adjustments because uh, you want, you would like to have your tight end out there, be a full-time player, be like a Greg Olson type of guy who's excellent at blocking, but then is also a, a dynamic pass catcher, which Adam Troutman is. Yeah. I mean, that'll be interesting to watch. Uh, forgotten down at the back of the draft is Evan Ingram. He's a value. He, yes, he, he is. Led the team in targets last you year. He's like, a talented to guy. Whisper. Yeah, I know. When you're talking about Ingram. I've always hated Evan Ingram, and so for me to say he's a value means he's actually a value because I don't I don't want to talk him up. Uh, I think in Dynasty Leagues as well, he's a great target because he's still very young. He's probably going to switch teams. Uh, I don't see the Giants paying up for him, and, and he's got the talent. If another team goes and pays a lot, I think he's got a bright future, and he's you know the tight end 18 right now, which means he's undrafted. Which – Tight end is going to end up on more of your rosters. It'll definitely be Tyler Higby is is the one that ends up on the majority of my teams. It's the same for me. Yeah, uh, I would say, man, at this point, it's it's Irv or Troutman. I want to get some Hawkinson. So <laughs> what I need to have happen is I need to be in really good leagues where people are taking all my fifth-round targets, and then I will happily take him. Because he's on my list of fifth-round targets, but usually... For for late, and, and I take that back. Who's going to be on uh, most of my teams is one of the top three tight ends. Do you have a super deep tight end sleeper pick that could break out? That I mean, I know Troutman's kind of that for you, Mike, but you yeah. have him ranked pretty high. Is there somebody else on the radar for either of you guys? I have one name. Oh, I know, I know your name. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I can well, I can guess. Who is it? Is this Gigantor? No. Oh, no, that's a good one. Mo Alley Cox. Mo yeah, that's the Indianapolis Colts tight end. He is the largest man in all of existence that's ever walked the face of this earth. And we've, we've seen, you know, uh, Carson Wentz, who will be back sooner than later, we've seen him over-target his tight end. There's... T.Y. Hilton is no longer a number one wide receiver. I like Michael Pittman a lot, but you got to leave room for there's no one who is fully established as Carson Wentz's go-to target, and it could end up being one of the tight ends. 
Um, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, uh, Dan Arnold in Carolina, who was brought in to be a pass catcher. But, um, no, I, I'm curious what's going to happen in Los Angeles with the 93 targets of Hunter Henry removed. Oh, is this, is this a Donald Parham? Yeah. I mean, like Jared Cook could be done. Like he's been trending towards DUN for a while. And if that was the case, you have uh, Donald Parnum Jr. there, more athletic, a red zone weapon, uh, deeper leagues, dynasty leagues. Maybe throw him on your on your bench if you haven't already um, considered that. Any any interest in Logan Thomas, guys? So Logan Thomas is interesting to me. Uh, we, we've been off of him uh, because they brought in Curtis Samuel. They look, you know, they brought in uh, Kelvin Harmon is back. Yeah, and and Ryan Fitzpatrick usually targets those, you know, first and second wide receiving targets, but. I, I I think we've I think we've gone too far. Logan Thomas is a is a quality uh, tight end. He's looked good. He looked good in preseason. So I he's someone that is interesting. If he falls in a draft, I would be willing to he, take the shot at being he, wrong on him. He might fall. The, my problem with Logan Thomas is he had a hundred and ten targets last year. That's the third most targets at the position. Was only able to finish as the tight end six. I mean he was averaging eight point eight. He averaged 8.8 fantasy points per game. That's that's fewer on average than Mike Gesicki. That's right under uh, like Jonu Smith was averaged eight points a game last year. I mean, I know he finished higher, but for him to be a difference maker again this year, I I don't see it happening. And really. To close out the tight end discussion, I think that's the headline that fantasy players need to take away from it. Is when we discuss tight ends, we are framing it in the in the context of like, can they be a difference maker for your team? So if you don't take a difference maker at the top of your draft, what is the best combination of draft price and potential? Right? Not necessarily because you can get average production from the waiver wire at tight end. You can go find an average start any given week that's just gambling on a touchdown or yep. gambling on three or four catches. What you're trying to do is, can you get, you know, is Tyler Higby in the seventh round going to be the upside pick of the year? Is it going to be somebody even later than that that offers you, is Noah Fant going to have the breakout year? I want to go hunting for that if I'm not investing early picks on difference makers. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, if you invest an early pick on Dallas Goddard, you are you are hurting your team because your, your early pick is going to say, that's my guy, and I'm starting him every week. But you'd be much better to grab Gerald Everett off of the waiver wire, play him against Arizona, a good matchup for tight end, and he gets a touchdown versus just rolling out a decent target. Like Last year's tight end nine, drafted as a tight end nine, was Hayden Hurst. If you drafted him there and you, you just played him every week, you were not happy. Oh, but you got the tight end nine that you were drafting at tight end nine. The, the, there's only a couple tight ends that matter. If you don't get one, stream the position. All right. As we close it out, and tomorrow, Brooks, what do we have on the table tomorrow? Tips and tricks show? Yes, sir. Oh, top 10 tips and tricks. going to be a fun one. Uh, Jason's been doing a lot of uh, research into how to title his tips. That's all I care about is what a kind catchy of, title. Yeah. Uh, cup of tea? Is, is that in contention tomorrow? I'm only doing British titles, so right. we will see. <laughs> uh, so we've got tips and tricks. We've got a mock draft show. We've got our My Guys episode this week. So I encourage you, make sure you follow us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we always love your reviews over on Apple Podcasts and subscribe over on YouTube. We want to thank our sponsors that keep this show going each and every day as a daily fantasy football podcast. We want to thank Traeger Grills. Um, look, maybe your team, it's taking form right now. Maybe you forgot to, to tune into the show in the offseason. You're catching up right now. Look, your taste buds, regardless of how your team ends up, your taste buds will be winning every week when you fire up a Traeger wood-fired grill on game day. Mm. You kind of drop the voice with the upgrade in the taste. The closer you get to delicious meats, the lower your <laughs> voice gets. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unlike reaching for a quarterback in the second round, there's no risk when you are cooking on a Traeger. Set it, forget it, and then eat it later on. Consistent temperatures. Perfect results every time. They got the Wi-Fi technology. That's a little catchy I little like title. I like to cook from my couch. Yes, uh, especially in Arizona where you got to put the meat on and then you got to go hide. Uh, get out from outside or get in from outside. Uh, take things a step further, letting you... Uh, the Wi-Fi lets you monitor from inside. You got the ability to grill, to smoke, to bake, to roast, to braise, to barbecue. 
And uh, you got burgers, you got wings, briskets, brownies, all on the grill, fueled by all natural hardwood pellets. You can try different pellet types, and they give you that wood fired flavor in every bite. If you haven't done it, you're missing out. Go ahead and lock in a Traeger grill right into your lineup by heading to Traeger.com slash footballers. And thank you to Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Right now, there was uh, there's Travis Kelsey. Look, beard or no beard, a Travis Kelsey signed Kansas City Chiefs full-size helmet currently sitting at $47, and a Devontae Adams signed jersey currently sitting at $52. PristineAuction.com, when you register, use the code BALLERS, you'll get a $10 credit. All right, that'll do it. Make sure you get the Ultimate Draft Kit if you want to be entered for that exclusive UDK for life giveaway, ultimatedraftkit.com. We'll be back tomorrow. Can't wait. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.